Hey guys, uh, you guys have been watching my review of the Play Imaginative uh, Super Alloy Iron Man 3 Mark II uh, War Machine. And uh, one of the couple of questions I've been getting from you guys, um, actually off the video, was uh, how does he scale to the Hot Toys version? And uh, initially, Spot didn't actually want to include this part of the video on top of the, the video of the Play Imaginative version because simply I didn't want to compare you know, two different companies to collectively together in one video. So I thought I'd shoot this video just uh, on, on the side and uh, show you guys the differences between the two. So we've kind of already touched base on the very, very heavy uh, War Machine Mark II. And again, this is from Play Imaginative. It's 18 inches tall. It's 80% die cast metal. And uh, again, a, a phenomenal, phenomenal piece. But reaching off camera here, I just want to bring him in because, again, you guys have been asking. Uh, here, right here, is the War Machine Mark... I think this is War Machine Mark II. Yeah, Mark II on the arm here uh, from Hot Toys. And I guess realistically, the, the main difference from anyone, you know, who's watching this can see the main difference is size. Uh, the Hot Toys version, which is way down there, and he looks small, like he looks like he's the size of a G.I. Joe, but keeping in mind, this is a 12-inch figure. Comparing that then, of course, to the very mammoth size 18-inch version of the Play Imaginative, you can see how they have similar aspects to them. There are similar points to them that they all they, they both share. Uh, but then you have one that I, I feel does a little bit better of a job. And, and again, I didn't want to do this as a, as a tack on to the video review that I did of the Play Imaginative because I really didn't want to do the comparisons straight out in, in the one video. So I guess really getting it out of the way initially, the, the, main, the main differences I see between the two, now that I'm seeing them kind of uh, both in hand, uh, is the coloring. The Play Imaginative uh, One Quarter uh, uh, War Machine Mark II has, I feel, more distinct color separation from one another. The silver and then this dark, uh, kind of like a like a gunmetal. It's got a little bit of brown to it, but like a, a gunmetal gray. There's more of a difference in transition between, like it, it's a stark difference between you've got your silver plates on the armor and then you've got the darker gray in the upper torso, for example. I find it wasn't until actually I finished the review of the Play Imaginative version, uh, and then I went back later to, to look at the two, that I, I did actually notice a considerable difference between the coloring. And I immediately thought it was just going to be, you know, just a, a scaled down similar version. But you can see that the Hot Toys version is a little more brown in, in, the, in the silver color, like up here especially, is more silver in color or more brown in color of the silver than the the sil the dark silver that we get with the play imaginative. Um, also, too, like the the arc reactor, uh, which I think I'm trying to remember actually how to turn this how to turn this on. I think there's a little switch on the back here. Spot just found the place right there. It's up at the top, right underneath his head. But uh, lighting that up, it. It's a whiter light. I find it's a more consistent light than the Play Imaginative, but I find like the coloring outside, like around the arc reactor, to be a little more muted of a red than what we got with the Play Imaginative. Uh, showing you also what I mean too when I light up the Play Imaginative one quarter scale. The one quarter scale, to its credit, I, I find it looks more like a mechanical light up Whereas the iron, the war machine from Hot Toys, I find is just a softer light. I don't know. Like I'm, I kind of think this looks, this looks presenting wise, this looks a little softer as a display piece. But I find that has almost a more industrial light to it, as if it was an actual working suit, versus something like this. This looks more like a collection item that is lit up with a softer light that looks a little more like it would actually have an internal light lighting up. And then when it comes to the eyes, for example, I think hands down might give it to the uh, the Play Imaginative. I, I find it's, again, a brighter light. The War Machine actually from the Hot Toys seems a little bit softer, again, like a softer light. Arc Reactor is a little softer, but like the eyes, it, they're not as predominantly lit as, say, the 
play imaginative. Now, granted, you could say like, the, the, because it's a larger unit, it has larger lights to work from, whereas the uh, the Hot Toys version is smaller, so its light source may not be as bright. Um, one thing I also really like about the Play Imaginative, at least by comparison, is the lighting up of the arc reactor is a little easier to access um, just by it being a flap on the back, whereas let me just get him to stand, whereas the Hot Toys, you actually had to take the plate off the right off the top here to access his light point. I kind of, having looked at the the Play Imaginative, I kind of wished that there had been a flap here, similar in the same area as the, the one quarter, where I could have turned the light on without having to pull this plate off. So the Canon, um, there's the, the Hot Toys right here, the Play Imaginative. You know, it's not until really that you put them one next to each other. I don't, it just seems like the Hot Toys now by comparison it uh, comparing it over to the the one quarter, the Hot Toys seems to have a more, almost like a browner tinge to its armor, as opposed to it being like a more darker gray, like we've got here. You can see that's it's a little more brown in contrast. Uh, but uh, really, aside from that, like the labels are the same. It's still got like the danger labels. Um, like the front is is a little bit different, just because the the one quarter lights up, whereas the the Hot Toys wouldn't. It would just be. Uh, you know, just the, the straight cannon. Uh, it looks like it has the same adjustable points to it, the same swivel points uh, between the two. So really, I mean, I would give, I would say that they're both, I would say they're both probably the exact same to one another. Really the only difference, if you're not factoring in the light end of it, the, the Hot Toys does seem like it's got a little more of a brown coloring to it, I would say. Uh, as it comes to articulation, they're pretty much the same when it comes to like leg wise. They've, they've got the same similar articulation in the leg. It's really not a, a lot different. And also too, the Hot Toys benefited from having the snap apart torso that you could adjust it and you know contract, uh, contract it. Whereas the Play Imaginative just is outright sectional, almost like ball joint areas where they can independently bend. They're really about the same when it comes to that end of it. I guess really the difference being between the two of them is probably when you start getting to the arms. Uh, the the Hot Toys I found was a little more limited because it, it had just a straight swiveled arm, whereas the Play Imaginative had the double jointed arm. I found you could get a little more movability and it didn't seem as restricted um, to probably like, I would say the Hot Toys. Um, also too, like the, the shoulder area, uh, this area would would pop and uh, would pop up, and you could uh, bring it further down. It had that as I guess as a a, pl a plus, maybe I would say. Uh, the Play Imaginative didn't really have that, but it did have also the spring shoulder area, which I think allowed for a little more movability uh, versus the the uh, the Hot Toys. The Hot Toys, don't get me wrong, the Hot Toys I think still has the good posability arm in the arm section here. Elbows, I think I might give it to the Play Imaginative for uh, for what it, it can do a little bit more. I find when it comes to the articulation, at least in the elbow area. I'm also too one thing I'm I'm kind of noticing when I'm seeing like the differences now between the two two uh, figures is that the Play Imaginative seems to have a little more of a forgiving leg joint. And uh, again, when I went back and I checked like Hot Toys version. It seems a little more, because I don't think, because this section right here, because this thigh area of the of the, uh, the Hot Toys is heavier, I find it just feels more floppy in the leg area here versus the, uh, the Play Imaginative. Now again, Spot's doing this video just to kind of show you guys the differences between the two. You of course have to factor in the fight, the, the cost of these two pieces as well. Uh, the one quarter Hot, uh, the one quarter uh, War Machine Mark II is is about six hundred dollars. Uh, the War Machine die because he is die cast. He's a little bit more than a regular twelve inch uh, Hot Toys. He's sitting around three hundred dollars. Um, there's about a difference of six inches, and uh, the the Play Imagine it feels heavier. But I mean that's again only probably proportionately to the fact that he's taller too. You know if he was about the same height. I feel like he could be probably a little heavier if even at, still if he was marked drop down to this the 12 inch size. I feel like the play magic could be maybe a little bit heavier, but again you're 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 comparing you know a 600 plus figure 
to a 300 plus figure. So, you know, there is a difference between the two. Um, also too, uh, you know, to be doing a comparison between the two figures, you may only have the spacing uh, in your collection to accommodate a, a 12 inch figure. Uh, some collectors don't even have the means to accommodate a, a 12 inch figures. You know, that's why, you know, a lot of collectors uh, also are picking up six inch versions of figures too, just because of, you know, of scale. You may not have a, the proper space to accommodate a, tw uh, you know, an 18 inch version of War Machine. So it's again, something else you want to factor into when you're comparing, you know, 12 inch hot toys to 18 inches of a play imaginative. So Spot just want to shoot this little video. It's not a not too big of a, a long of a video or a tutorial or anything like that. But I just wanted to show you guys the comparisons between the two because I know you guys have asked what the difference is between like the 12 inch version of the diecast War Machine and what the difference is between the uh, the Play Imaginative. Um, if I could sum it up, I would just think I feel as if if you can accommodate the scale, and it's a shame that you know they couldn't have done a 12 inch. But if they if you can accommodate the scale the quarter inch is a better feeling figure. Like it feels like it's more, it's better constructed, but the 12 inch, I, I still love the 12 inch and it obviously it fits in perfectly with the other hot toys pieces. So if you can accommodate the larger scale, I would and the, then the cost, the play imaginative, I think looks better, looks a little more uh, like complete versus the, uh, the war machine, which just has a almost a more of a muted coloring to it. But again, it, the, the question would certainly just be with what you guys can accommodate and, you know, the space that you have to work with. I hope that hope certainly I have helped, you know, kind of just walk you guys through uh, through this. I know, again, you guys have asked what the difference is between the 12 inch Hot Toys die cast war machine and what the quarter inch play imaginative uh, Mark II war machine was. So hopefully I have been able to clarify that for you guys. Certainly stay tuned. Spot's going to have a lot more videos heading your way. Thanks for watching as you always do. I'll see you guys next time.